Hey, morning guys, it's Gary coming back to you here from the Old Barn Homestead. And it's Monday morning and uh, I've spent some time this weekend cleaning up. I think the last several videos I started out by saying, man, I got a mess in here, I need to clean this up. And this is one of those things, if you don't stay on top of it, it will, uh, it's, it's so easy to get it out of control. And one of my uh, hoarding areas is this area right here. I get boxes and different things just stacked up and um, I, I try to recycle as many boxes as I can. If you ever get something from me, uh, if you buy something or if I, you know, order, if you order something or I send you something, it's likely to come in a recycled box, some Amazon box. But anyway, I had all this space underneath the bottom of this shelf that wasn't really organized that well. So I just kind of made better use of the stuff and it just to me it looks better because it's a little more hid even though this rack kind of it gets a little unwieldy but overall it's it's a, a lot you know as you can see i got my space back here where i was painting but i've got a bunch of stuff to paint here in the next couple of days so i'll be making this back a mess again but at least for a little bit i got it cleaned up uh and it is just amazing how how quick it uh how quick it gets stacked up on you but you can see it's all cleaned up i even cleaned the lathe so um one of the things i don't know what it is about this spray foam but man it, you can see that right there kind of in the dead center of the screen that is a dirt dauber nest these guys they, the dirt daubers the wasp they love to get in here and um here's one that's half dying right here it's not gonna fly yellow jacket or something i had a whole swarm of them in here i came in here one day i had had the doors open and man they were everywhere just swarming around and they were trying to make a nest so um i didn't have any more of the wasp spray stuff so i used i had some uh you know and then we got this these guys right here are all over the place little snail worm looking things i'm constantly battling those but anyway, um, I, uh, let me see my Reed Eichner thing, uh, prop there. I still got to work on that. Um, but I had this table saw, it was a big mess and I got that all cleaned up and organized. See how well I organized it. Yeah. As do you get credit for cleaning something up? If you just move a pile from one place to another, does that y'all give me anything for that? But um, anyway, I got some jobs uh, coming up here and I've got a, two things I got to cut out on the table that are probably going to end up taking two sheets of uh, 16 gauge. This is some eighth inch right here. And this weekend I did a little job. I cut a thing out. I had Eco Mouse Design do the artwork on it. The guy had messaged me, a local guy on Facebook, and uh, he's making a fire ring and wanted it custom with some lettering on it so i just did that uh saturday and yesterday the my neighbor that i borrow the tractor from all the time i'll turn turn you around look at you at least talk to you a little bit um you know we we help each other out and it was funny um he he came by here one day and brought me some food and said uh can you uh, he got a ticket for the lights being off on his trailer and it's a little, it's a little, I don't know, it's about a 10 foot or eight foot, maybe a little utility trailer. And he uses it all the time. He uses it pretty much every day. And, um, I've worked on it once before and it needs some more work. Um, but anyway, so he said, you think you can help me, you know, figure out the lights on it. And he was here in his truck and I said, well, just back up to my to my trailer over here and let's hook you up to make sure it's not your truck because he wrecked his truck a while back and had you know ran it off the road and had a bunch of work done to it um so i thought maybe something had gotten pulled loose under there so you know we quickly checked and his brake lights turn signals were working on my trailer so i said okay so i said okay it's not not that so go over there and work on his and his lights are just all busted up and he just he's rough on stuff i'm rough on stuff but man this guy is rough i mean he he's anyway so um so his lights are all coming apart and busted open the, 
every one of the lights on it, the side of the case was cracked where he had hit it with something or whatever. And the way the lights were mounted were all, you know, like my trailer, the lights are flush mounted and they've got that little gasket and they sit, they basically sit in board of the outer panels, which saves you a ton, you know, on beat, getting them beat up and all that. Well, his are all sitting external and, you know, backing stuff up and whatever. I mean, if you're using it all the time and you're going in and out of, you know, places and barns and whatever, which is what he does, you know, it's easy to get it caught if you're not, if you're kind of rough on stuff. But um, when I saw all that and plus his wiring, you know, was just in terrible shape, I said, go to Harbor Freight and get a new LED wiring kit uh, with a harness and new lights and bring it over here and let's, let's get this thing done. Next thing you know, it was five hours later rewiring that trailer, and but he's got all new LED lights on it, and uh, as it turned out, in a in a few places, wires were routed through some, uh, pl uh, not plasma, maybe plasma, torch cut holes in the frame with no grommets, no sh uh, sheathing or anything, and everywhere it had ran through, it was down to the bare wire, so they were probably touching, and then after all that, his running lights still weren't working he, he had brake lights and turn signal but no running lights so i was you know metering that out and as it turned out he had a fuse blown as well we didn't catch it on my trailer because i just said hey hit your brake lights i didn't even think about running lights it was in the middle of the day so i spent a big part of yesterday helping him with that with that trailer so i didn't get uh really anything done in the shop and then i spent saturday in here cleaning uh so i didn't get a lot of stuff done here this weekend as far as fab shop time but at least uh you know what it's one of those things where when you start the week off on monday like it is today everything's clean everything's put up it's organized the tools are where they're supposed to go and you can get going and get and get and be productive so um i'm gonna make a live stream on the turbo cobra channel here in a little bit i gotta get this sheet off the table get some cold rolled on and get to cutting these jobs and i'll get the door uh opened up it's a uh, it's a little later here this morning. I'm getting a little bit of a late start. I think it's around, it's a little after eight when I'm making this video. So it's, you know, it's in the fifties out and, um, so it's, it's nice enough that I can open the doors and, and do a live stream. So, um, anyway, uh, the one, the one question I was going to ask is, um, is about the spindle on the mill let me let me just turn it on for you it, it seems like in high gear it runs good you know it, it seems smooth and i don't really i mean it's got a, a, a touch of gear wine to it but um the i don't really see you know any places to add uh oil to this thing i mean it seems like that might be a drain for the case but the only thing I see is is right here, you know, that says grease lightly with spindle speed set to minimum RPM in either range. Run at this speed for one minute. And then there is a Zerk fitting up under there. So I'm guessing that that, you know, you can grease the uh, the gearing in it. But let me let me flip it on here and uh, show you guys, let, it, let you listen to it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's get it in high gear here. This takes two hands, hang on a second. You probably won't be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna set you down here. You might be looking at my ugly face. All right, so it's in high gear. So I'm gonna uh, get it flipped on here. You hear that clackety clack up there? It's it's more pronounced in low low gear. I don't know about you guys, but it, that doesn't sound right to me. And it's kind of always been that way, but definitely no, lately it's gotten a little more uh, noticeable. So is that? I mean, would you think that that's the only place that you? Uh, then you just put grease in it and what kind of grease would I put in there? 
Um, so leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, I want to, um, you know, after my issues with the air compressor, I want to make sure I'm, you know, I'm doing good maintenance on this thing. And the lathe and the other mill, I got all those. I know where the, uh, all of the, uh, you know, places to lube it are. And, um, you know, and you can always kind of tell, see how that's wet there that you're, that you're oiling for the table and all that's working, you know. So, um, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. If there's anything I'm missing on this, what is that? Or that may be some kind of a drain right there too. So I don't know. It would seem like maybe this has got a, a gearbox here with oil for the, um, for the quill. Yeah, there's an oil level there. I don't see anything up there to put anything into it. And it looks like it's half full. You see the line there, but Sometimes these things get stained over years and years and years of use. You know, this is kind of wet a little bit. You know, it's got a, an oily residue on it, but it's not like wet, wet. It's not leaking or dripping. So I don't know. Brian Block might know. He's, he's the Cincinnati man. And um, I don't have a manual on this. I found a couple of inf pieces of information, but there's limited information out there on it and i need to go look it up again but anyway i'll let you guys go i'll see you